the leader, Joe Swinson, says they're now campaigning simply to stay in the EU. And she joins us now uh, live. Good morning to you, Joe Swinson. Good morning. Good to what, be with you, as was, always, Piers. What was your view of Paddy Ashdown and his integrity and credibility as a former leader of your party? Well, Paddy Ashdown was bold and fearless and determined. And last week, or in fact, earlier this week, there was a beautiful memorial service for him in Westminster Abbey with thousands of people in attendance and we miss him greatly and remember him as a great leader. OK, I want to play you a clip from Paddy Ashdown. This is on the night of the referendum. I want to get your reaction once you've heard this. Those who asked for this, and I was the first leader ever to ask for a referendum way back in 1990, um, have said so because they believe it's an act of democracy. I will forgive no one who does not accept the sovereign voice of the British people once it has spoken, whether it's by 1% or 20%. Once they've taken, it is our duty as those who serve the public to make the best use and to make sure that our country does the best it can with the decision the people have given us. I've heard Mr Farage say tonight, you know, we're coming back even if we lose. Excuse me, he's the person who complained about lack of democracy in Europe. If he will not accept the sovereign voice of the British people when they vote, whatever they say, then I think he does not have the national interest at heart, he has his own interest at heart. I mean, he couldn't have been more unequivocal there, Paddy Ashdown. You know, anyone that refused to honour that referendum result, and he presumed at the time that Remain was going to win, that they would be basically the enemy of democracy. And he thought he was going to be talking about Nigel Farage. Turned out that Brexit won. And yet here you are, the leader of the Liberal Democrats, the party that Paddy Ashdown loved, and you don't, just don't want to have another vote now. You want to literally stop Brexit happening. You want to do the very thing that Paddy Ashdown said he would find unforgivable. Why? Well, let's be clear, Paddy Ashdown wanted to stop Brexit. So I don't think it's, uh, it, there's any doubt whatsoever about that. Because of what Brexit will mean for our country in terms of making people poorer, hurting our public services and making it harder for us to get real action on things like the climate emergency. Now, we had that referendum three and a half years ago and the government has gone away and taken the result of that referendum and negotiated what that will mean for the British public. What is on offer today bears no resemblance to what was said in the 2016 referendum campaign. But Joe Swinson, no, they in didn't that have case, but going around the country case, with food and medicine case, shortages you, on the side of them. You may have a justification for a second referendum, but your name is the Liberal Democrats. I mean, Democrats is literally part of your name, not part of any other party's name. It's part of yes. your name. And you are saying you're not going to respect the democratic vote of the people. Not even by saying, actually, before we revoke Article 50, we would have a second referendum. You're just going to cancel the democratic vote. So we are still campaigning to have a people's vote. As I argued in Parliament this week, we believe a people's vote, a referendum, is the best way to get clarity, to get resolution of this current gridlock and Brexit impasse that I think we can all agree we are currently in. But it does look like it may be that a general election will be upon us. And in that general election, in that democratic process, the Liberal Democrats will campaign to stop Brexit. So, hang on. so if you win, if you win a democratic who's vote, been attention. if you win a democratic vote, we're expected to respect that democratic vote. But your immediate action as a democratically elected government would be to cancel a democratic vote. Just, just to be crystal clear about this, our position in that election, when we go to the country and we campaign, and I come on programmes like yours, and we have meetings in public halls around the country, and we have articles in newspapers, and we knock on doors, and we deliver leaflets, we will be saying, if you elect a Liberal Democrat majority government, we will revoke Article 50. In that campaign and in the ballot box, if the people of this country then choose to elect a majority Liberal Democrat government, then we will do exactly what we have said 
during that election okay, campaign. Okay, but, okay, but Joe Swinson, all right, 50. all right, okay, hypothetically. That's the way democracy works. Okay, let, actually, let me tell you how Hang democracy on. actually... 2016, let me tell you how 17 democracy, million me, people voted to leave. Let me tell you how democracy works. It works the way Paddy Ashdown says it worked. That when you have a vote that you give to the people and they vote a certain way, you say Paddy Ashdown wanted to stop Brexit. Yeah, he voted Remain. I voted Remain. I would do again. However, as Paddy Ashdown said, if the result comes back the other way to the way that you wanted, you absolutely have to honour that democratic result and the democratic majority of the people of this country. I've got one question for you. Given that you fly so loose now with the result of democratic votes, if you were to win a general election, Liberal Democrats, with a majority, it's unlikely, but things happen. It's a crazy time in politics. Say you win. Why should I accept it? Why shouldn't I just, the moment that result comes in, immediately stand up and say, nope, I'm not having it. I refuse to acknowledge that the Liberal Democrats have won a majority. Sorry, tough titty. It ain't happening. Well, do you know what? In that scenario where there's a Liberal Democrat majority government, I think there'll be also other MPs who will be elected to Parliament who will not agree with us and they will vote against us in Parliament in the same way that I was elected in 2005 That's not the question. as a Liberal Democrat. That's not what I said. There was a no, Labour I'm saying, majority I'm not talking government about what... and I continued to vote against no, them. No, but Joe, I'm, I'm saying you don't even get that far. I'm saying I simply refuse and the other parties rise up and say, no, no, by Joe Swinson's own rule book, we are simply not going to accept the result of the election. Yes, the Liberal Democrats have won. Yes, the people have spoken. Yes, it was a democratic election, but we are simply not going to accept it. You won't be in Parliament having these debates you're talking yes. about because the other parties will have taken your rule and applied it to yourself and they will say we are not accepting the result of that election. Then what? Piers, democracy did not end on the 23rd of June 2016. We live in a democracy, and as a leading Brexiteer once said, David Davis, if a democracy ceases to be able to change its mind, then it ceases to be a democracy. So if we have a general election where undoubtedly Brexit is going to be the key issue and the people of this country vote in a party as a majority that has a clear position that we want to stop Brexit, then in those circumstances, that will be a mandate to stop Brexit and to revoke okay. Article so in other 50. Words, in other words, until that point, other we words, will still you, continue to in campaign other words, if you to have get, a people's vote yeah. on the Brexit deal. In other words, if you get the result you want in that general election, that's fine and that must be observed and respected and actually no one should be allowed to stand up to it. What happens if Boris Johnson wins that election with a mandate for no deal? Like what happens if he actually campaigns a general then, election for no then, deal? Then, no, well, let me, well, by your own by your own criteria, you, Joe Swinson, would you then accept that he has a mandate for no deal if he wins? Look, you will not be surprised that I'm going to keep standing up for what I believe in. But let's be clear: if Boris Johnson wins a majority at that election, he will take that as a mandate for a no deal Brexit would you accept and it? take our country would you, off the cliff would you edge. accept it? And people need to have a choice in that election. I understand that. I will still campaign against it, Piers. I'm not understand, going would to you stop accept, standing up for I'm what not I saying you in. wouldn't campaign against it. I'm saying would you accept by your own rule again that Boris Johnson in that eventuality would then have a mandate from the people to deliver no deal? Would you accept it? Because you're not accepting Brexit. Well, I would recognise I would recognise that there would be very little I would be able to do about it, although I would still be campaigning for what I think is in the best interest of our country. And that is what we are all elected to do, those of us in politics, to stand up for what we think is in the but national you're not elected. interest. With respect I to you, Joe Swinson, with respect to you, you are not you are not elected actually to pretend that democracy hasn't happened. The point of Parliament is to enact the will of the people in referendums and elections. That's but, your job. Hang on, but, but, but yeah, exactly, and elections, and elections, Piers. And the point is that people do have the option to make a choice. It is not that that point in time is set in stone and nobody can ever change their mind or the country, knowing what we do now about the... Uh, medicine and food shortages that, as I say, they weren't plastered over the side of a bus. 
People do not need to just accept that. They can choose a different option. And if we're in a general election as Liberal Democrat leader, I will be making sure okay. that they have a different option. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. You mentioned... And if they choose that option, I will deliver it. Let me... You mentioned broken promises on buses, right? I mean, have you ever broken promises to the electorate? Yeah, and I tell you what, I wouldn't recommend it. You know, we no, we learned you, a lot have, have you from done our it? time in coalition, and there's things which I regret. Yes, which one? I which was the biggest think promise that you wrong broke on tuition fees? And All right, so yeah, I just to remind people who may not know, you, we got it wrong you, on tuition you fees. told people in this country. I, I've just said you, it twice, Piers. I know, and I'm just explaining to viewers who may not be as savvy as you or I about this what you actually did, which is actually you, Joe Swinson stood there with Liberal Democrats and you vowed we're going to get rid of tuition fees and the moment you got a sniff of power, you actually trebled them. I mean, you talk about Boris Johnson betraying people with a promise on a bus, right? What could be a bigger breach of a promise to the young people of this country than actually trebling the fees you said you would get rid of? Look, Piers, I've said very clearly, we got that wrong, I got that wrong. And I've learned from that. And I am determined to stop Brexit. I'm standing on that platform. And that is a principle I am sticking to absolutely clearly. And if I'm elected as Prime Minister with a Liberal Democrat majority, then don't be surprised that I stick by my word and stop Brexit. Uh, well, I hope, you, I hope you keep your word. Your track record isn't great on this. I mean, you also campaigned for a referendum in Europe, didn't you? We said that there should be a referendum of this treaty change. We passed a law to that effect. We haven't had the treaty change. And we certainly shouldn't have been having a referendum in the circumstances of trying to save the Conservative Party uh, with a short period of time to actually have the campaign and then triggering Article 50 before we'd even worked out what our negotiating position was, before the Cabinet had even agreed a negotiating position. There has been a catalogue of errors by Conservative Prime Ministers in this. We are in a Brexit mess because they have put the Conservative Party ahead of the national interest and it is time for that to stop. We can end the Brexit chaos and the way to do that is by stopping Brexit. Sounds a bit like a party who only wants a referendum they know they can win and will only respect a referendum result if they're the winners. Well, I think there is a separate issue for us to discuss as a country about how we use referendums and whether they are the ideal mechanism if we have a country that is I think it divided, was a mistake then to have uh, a referendum. They might a referendum be... that, you know, at one stage you backed. I've, in the last few years, I've lived through two referendums, the Scottish independence referendum and obviously the Brexit referendum. And I do think we have a very divided country at the moment. And I think there's a lot of us who want us to be able to come together. And it is, it's very hard in these circumstances. And I do think we need to find and you think, ways to with bridge respect, those divides, Joe Swinson, you engage think, in debate. You think the way to unite this country on Brexit is to simply pretend it hasn't happened and to tell 17 and a half million people your vote counted for nothing. If I get into power, literally, I'm going to ignore you. I'm not just going to have a second vote. I'm going to revoke Article 50. I'm going to stop Brexit. And you're standing there proudly saying you are the unifying voice in this country because you're going to tell 17.4 million Brits who voted in one way your vote counted for nothing, and that's going to solve everything. They're all going to go, thank you so much, Joe Swinson. I really appreciate your efforts to unify the country, and I couldn't agree with you more. I'm in, under no illusions about the challenges that are facing our country right now and how difficult it is to unite the country. I believe that we need to resolve Brexit in order to get on with making people's lives better and dealing with many of the genuine concerns and injustices and grievances that people have and for some people led them to vote for Brexit. I appreciate it was a complex issue with millions of people voting. Some of course, people, there were a wide variety people, of reasons why people voted for that. It was the single biggest vote in the history of this country. Concerns that for some people... That's what I said. There's millions and millions of people. And of course, therefore, there were many reasons. It's complex. 
it's not a, a binary situation where there's only one one thing which was a factor that led people to vote how they did. But there were very genuine concerns about how the economy doesn't work for enough people, about how people can go out and be in work and still find it difficult to put a roof over their head and food on the table. Okay. And those are issues that I believe we can best address if we have the prosperity of remaining in the European Union and the government get on with addressing those. Okay. At all the right. moment, and to the, and to all the students, nothing else is And to happening. all the students you left completely skimped by trebling their tuition fees, do you want to take this chance to apologise to them for that broken promise? Look, I've said really clearly that that was something we shouldn't have done because we said we wouldn't do it and we should have stuck to our word. And I've learned from that. I've you learned say, from you that experience. Sorry? And it is only human to make mistakes and to learn from I, them. I, I and totally I have said agree. sorry and I do. You because did, you, we got that you, wrong. So you would like to apologise for basically leaving all the students in this country impoverished as a direct result of trebling their fees? I am sorry that that happened. I don't agree with your characterisation because obviously the way the policy worked, it's not about people paying up front. And I think that is important for people to understand because we do not want to put people off going to university when they understand that they are not going to have to pay up front. And indeed, we did deliver more people from low income backgrounds going okay. to university. All right. But I do regret that that, that that was a policy that we pursued when we said that we wouldn't. Joyce Winston, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.